Good morning, I guess. For some of us, it's the three in the morning still, so I apologize. I hopefully am wide-eyed, but we're going to be talking about what it means to take ownership and really just occupy Joomla. This is our project, but this is not just about Joomla specific. This can be something that we see uh, in all open source projects, and maybe not even just open source, but I just want to reiterate this. This is through the lens of Joomla, but this is something that applies to more than just Joomla. And I don't know, some of you may know that I lived in Germany for a little while, and I just wanted to rent a car for a while. My parents were coming, and we wanted to get something like this. Would have been really nice. Um, and that's what I had in my mind, and I started going to the enterprise center that was in town, and I practiced my German. Let's just remember, uh, this was, I was still kind of new and wasn't really sure in my, my speaking, but the guy was nice, and he let me talk, and he, he responded and said a bunch of things, and uh, I mostly understood, and he repeated them, and, uh, but he didn't speak English, which is unusual. A lot of times they will, as soon as they can tell I'm struggling or not clear, people will switch to English, and I was, very, I was just very happy with this guy because of that, but then he said this word, and I hadn't quite learned that word yet. Now, later on, I realized it's actually two words, another thing that you have to learn about in German. But when I heard this, this is actually the word that I heard. Now, <laughs> I'm not sure if, if everyone gets this, but in, in English, this means more like this thing, okay? This is in Austin. Now, I don't even know <laughs> how this works exactly. But this is a food truck, okay? That could be a meat wagon. Sometimes they call an ambulance a meat wagon. And I'm thinking, what the heck am I gonna be getting from this guy? I'm gonna be getting like a hearse? Or what am I driving around here? And just, I, I was so confused. And what it led me to, to remember is that what we say and how we say it matters. And when we're talking with one another, especially when we talk about things we're extremely passionate about, the words that we say mean a lot. And it's not just what we mean, but how we say it. And we also have to remember that we have dozens of languages and native languages. And, and uh, you know, we're speaking in English right now, but there's, there's people who say funny things from, from the UK, and I just, I, I don't know what they're saying. It's, it's important to remember that we have these, these, they're not necessarily barriers, but they are certainly things that we have to remember. So throughout this talk, we're going to be looking in on a few key words that we often use through our everyday experience in Joomla or in open source. Now, before we talk a little bit about Occupy Joomla, let's talk about Occupy Wall Street. What does this mean? And this is an example of somebody who feels like they are the 99%. Now, I ignore the fact that there's a lot of things wrong with the grammar in that sentence, but then again, this is a person who feels like they are part of the vast majority that is being overrun and ruled and basically stepped upon by this elusive 1%. The banks, um, the Wall Street people, mostly financial-based institutions. And so this guy represents that. He's a student. A lot of them, they're in debt. They don't have money. They don't have jobs. They lack. And the 1%, now they have it all. They've got a job, they've got all the money they could want, they've got more money, usually, than they could ever need. And it's always about the concept of equality or inequality. And that's what it boils down to, but it's, it's the equality of what people have. So essentially, it's all about ownership. And that's the whole basis, I think, of our own connection to Joomla, as we, have, we hope to have a sense of ownership. But the word ownership is really a, a difficult thing to take grasp of because it's, it's not just maybe the physical things that we, we have. So let's get an example. And appropriately timed before I knew that there was going to be an IPO for all the stocks in Facebook, I put this together already. And my question is, who owns Facebook? Now, you might think it's this guy. You might think it's his second-hand guy, uh, Dustin somebody or other, who is like the co-owner or something, or the investors. Or now that they're selling shares, it could be the shareholders. Well, statistically, 
It's actually Facebook employees as a group have the largest group. But what exactly is it, though, that these people own when we talk about ownership? When you say, who owns Facebook, what is it they own? Okay, stock people, they own a certificate that entitles them to a certain amount of maybe revenue or a certain value if someone were to purchase it from them. But who owns your data? On the website, what really makes Facebook tick? What makes it of any use or any value is the fact that there's data on there. And you know what? Facebook doesn't make it. You do. So the question is, is it you? Or does Facebook own the data? And you might think you own the data, or you might think you have control over the data, but I'm pretty sure that even if you go in and delete your profile, remove yourself completely off the grid, there's going to be traces of you still in the system. Now, that's not complete ownership in my mind. You still give up some of that sense of ownership. So the word to own, it really means this. Okay? It's a verb. And the two basic concepts are it's something you possess or something you acknowledge. So you can own your faults is a way of saying you, you acknowledge um, your, your, your faults. Uh, but really, the first one is what we want. We want to possess something. And when we're talking about Joomla, we'll get to how exactly that possession works. But it's the concept of have or have not. The 99% don't have something. They don't own it. And I think it's really the key part of what we're looking at. So I asked a few weeks ago on, on Twitter, just as a casual thing, who owns Joomla? And within about 30 seconds, I had five replies. And they were all the same. I do. And I thought, OK, that's cool. Everyone's taking sense of ownership, all right? Uh, but my question was then, if, what makes you the owner? I mean, what, it, what's the barrier? What exactly declares you an owner and not somebody else? And this is sort of the, the rough definition that I, I came up with, that Joomla is owned by people who make a conscious decision to take ownership. And that's going to be in the way that they interact with the software or the community. And it's, it's, it's a conscious thing. Okay, Let me give you two examples of people who may have ownership. There's a small business owner. He's, uh, he sells wood uh, furniture. And so he makes these items and he puts them on his website, but he hired somebody to do it. And basically what he ends up doing is using Joomla as a tool. He doesn't really look at it as a community. He doesn't even really know much about it. Whoever set it up for him didn't bother to tell him anything about it and just said, here you go. Here's Click here, type in your new product, add an image, and it's there. Is he part of the Joomla community? Does he have a sense of ownership? I think we'll all pretty well agree that he probably doesn't, okay? Because there's no conscious decision, per this definition, on his part to be part of this community. But my wife, on the other hand, she's a nurse. She does not like computers. That's why she married me. And ultimately has never worked with Joomla. But she's gone to Joomla days with me. Um, she talks to me on a regular basis about it. She, pretends at least to understand what I'm saying if she does. I don't know. But she's nice about it. Does she have ownership? Does she uh, exist in this community? And I say yes. Not just because she's my wife, but because she makes a conscious decision to care about it enough to do something, to interact, to remember. It, not with the software, but with the people. So it really comes down to it's free for us to claim ownership of Joomla. Anyone who wants it can take it, as long as you realize that you want it and that you can take it. And that also means that there's an unlimited supply, and there's also no way to measure how much ownership someone has. Because if it's just a conscious decision, it's, it's a yes or no. You, it's, it's a bit operant. You know, you're either, you've either got it or you don't. So that leads me to this question. Since you have ownership and we establish the concept of us all being fairly well even once you've established you have ownership, that it's the same for everyone, what does it mean? What does it grant you? And as you think about it for a moment, you really, there's not really very much that you get right off the bat. The actual ownership concept doesn't provide you anything more than just a, a sense of, 
of entitlement, that you're part of it. You, you have a sense that you are part of this community. Um, you don't have a deed or a title or a stock certificate. So you're really wanting to figure out, well, what can I do with my ownership? And it boils down to ownership does not equal control. A lot of times we mix those up. We think just because we are part of this community that we should be able to control it somehow, that we should be able to influence things and we should be able to make changes as we see fit. Okay, we can do this in lots of ways, but we often find that we think we have maybe more ability to do things than we do, or we're not sure how to make things happen. So our sense of ownership does not provide us control. And if it really did, it would be a lot of chaos because if everyone could go in and change code, if everyone could go in and update the, uh, the website, I don't know about you, but that would probably look pretty messy in my mind. And I just picture complete chaos. So we have this thing called meritocracy in open source. It's, an, it's a form, I think I have the definition. Let's give you that. This is the Wikipedia definition summarized by me. And uh, it's really long and boring. So the real summary of it is that people who have this thing of, called merit, we'll talk about that just a little bit more, this, this concept of merit, naturally rise up and become leaders in the project, help run it, help organize it, and essentially it's those people who have some sort of a, uh, some sort of a process to become the leaders and organizers of the different uh, parts of the project. So let's look at the word merit. So it's a, it's a noun. And it's, the first one, I think, is we don't really, it, we, there's two parts of it, claim to respect and claim to praise. We want respect. Some of us may feel too um, humble or, or just don't feel comfortable getting praise. But that's part of merit. And then excellence and worth, to me, are very similar. Something that's of value is merit. And then something deserving of commendation, or simply something people are are going to express thanks for or somebody's going to say that's great that's merit in a summary of, of what it is and, and it's something that we want then because merit is like the social economy currency okay when we talk about what we're going to do inside of Joomla you know what you have to have some standing in the community to start making a change if you walked into uh, if someone walks into a new open source project WordPress or Drupal, whatever, doesn't matter, from Joomla and just starts dictating, hey, we need to do this. You think they're going to listen? No. It, it's complete chaos in that sense if you let everyone just step up and make statements and level them out at the same, same point. It's, it's really not that I want merit. It's that I want to have the ability to claim my ownership but also makes a difference, establish some sense of control. And so this is the, the reply. Often, make a contribution. Do something. Get out there. Contribute. And quite frankly, this term turns me off greatly. Um, and I'm going to tell you why in just a moment. But there's this... Back in the old days when you have the, those VHS tapes, um, and my mom was videotaping outside with my, me and my brother for some reason, and she was taping me, I'm pulling my brother in a little wagon. And she says something about, you know, Jeremy, be careful. Uh, you could hurt him if you pull too quickly. And in my head, I heard something else. Because I started arguing with her, and I said, Mom, that's a bad word. She doesn't even know what word she said that could have been bad. But I think it was, sh maybe she said something that sounded like, shut up. And we were taught at young age that that was a bad word. And I argued with her back and forth, back and forth. And eventually, um, I get tired of it, and I just say, Mom, you don't know stuff. And the camera goes right off. And I, my, my dad likes to joke, at least he, maybe it wasn't a joke, it could be true, that right after the camera went off, I got it pretty good. But it's hard to say. But just like my mother, I tried to convince my mom that it was a bad word, not necessarily that she was saying it, or even saying a bad word at all. That's how I feel about the word contribution. So I want to try and take it out of our vocabulary. I think it has some connotations. It means something that isn't necessarily what we intend to say. 
Because when you say contribute, you get this sense of being out of control. You feel like, okay, what do I do? Where do I go? And if you don't have programming skills, well, okay, how do, you, how do I contribute then? Certain contributions are ranked higher than others. Believe it or not, being a programmer is, is revered more than somebody who doesn't have those skills in a lot of ways. Maybe not necessarily intentionally. Maybe that's not what people truly believe, but that's how people feel. When I do support with customers sometimes, they feel um, like they're unworthy to talk to somebody who knows how to, to change the code for some reason. They feel um, overwhelmed, like there's some sense of uh, reverence to people who have that skill. And it's the same. It seems the merit or the contributions have different levels of, of value. And so it makes you feel out of control because you don't know what to do, especially if you don't have the desired skills in order to contribute in the way that you want, especially if the idea that you have is out of your skill set. So it leads us to feel like we are the one, the 99%, that we are the ones who can't make changes, we can't enact anything, that we don't own really what we think we own. Just like the Wall Street Occupy movement is, they feel they own a sense of uh, the American dream, perhaps, that they can't get, or even they just can't live from day to day, which I think is part of basic human need, that we feel the same way when we're being told, okay, contribute, but we don't know how, we don't know, and, and the barriers and all that can that be a whole different discussion, but just the mental pressure thereof. So it's, it, then we feel unequal and we feel just like we cannot take ownership in the sense that we want to. And I'm tired. I, I just, I'm tired of hearing people talk about feeling like they can't contribute. I'm tired of talking about, well, how do we improve barriers? I'm tired of talking about why are we being beaten down by some mythical 1%? Because, quite frankly, it doesn't exist. And, and we have a choice that we can do something about it. Because we have, actually, a lot of control. We already take action. We do a lot of things. Here's some things that we do. Um, you might do different things even, but these are the basic things that all of us do at some point, one of these things. And it's largely about building relationships, being part of the community, interacting with the software. We take some sense of control. We take some ownership in what we do. And it's just a perception that we are not actually in control because we're actually the 1%. Because we're here today. We're at an event all about Joomla, all about the uh, community. We're part of that 1% that actually cares enough to take the ownership. The 99% in this situation are the people who don't take ownership. They don't realize it, maybe. They don't want to. They don't care. I don't know what their reason is. But the 99% is really anyone who just doesn't take ownership. Everyone else is part of this. There's no higher level beating us down because we're the 1% and these are the things that we do. But we need to look at changing what we do for measuring. We need to change the measure by contribution concepts or using the words that we use. And we need to think of new ways or better ways or just simply clearer ways to interact and discuss and talk with one another. This is my word that I would like to see. And I'm open to suggestions, but this is the one that just has caught me. Because I think it's got two parts to it. Interaction. Interaction really means this. So many definitions, you're learning a lot today. Reciprocal action. I love that. Reciprocal action. Now, what that means, just to be clear so everyone knows, reciprocal means something that happens to both people. You do it to somebody and they do it back to you. It's a cycle. It's reciprocal. It's action that's in a cycle that we continue to work with one another. I love it. Uh, effect and influence. Okay? We want to make an effect on the project, on the people around us, and that's also a sense of influence. I think interact is, is a much better thing. Uh, just a simple word, um, because I mentioned that I don't like the word contribute, but apparently the slide that I had is missing that describes what the word used to mean. It actually used to mean a tax or a levy. So when you're telling someone to contribute, you're almost, in a sense, 
historically that word means actually you're giving me a tax. Or it's like a king would say to his servants, you know, you have to contribute to my fund so that I'll protect you. Or else, kind of a thing. It's a threat almost. And so that sense of the word still exists, even if that's not how we use it. And so interaction gives us a different word. It's free of that connotation. It means that we're working together, we're interacting, we're in a cycle, uh, we're in a relationship with one another. How do we do this? And that's, that's the real question. I came here to talk about these things, really. I didn't want to... I needed to give you a sense of why we can occupy Juma, but what we had to do first is get over all that stuff before this. We have to get over the barriers of, of the words we use. We have to get over the sense of feeling like the 99%, because that's not going to serve anybody in this community. It's not going to do anything for what you want to do. It's not going to do anything for anybody else, but just simply clog up the tubes. It's going to, it's the people that you see on the forums or the things that they just keep discussing and discussing and discussing, um, or throwing out their ideas, but they really have no serious thought about working towards implementing it, or they just try to tell other people what to do, and yet they can't actually help out in any way, shape, or form. And it's not necessarily that they don't have the skills to do that thing. Oh, they don't have to have the skills to do whatever they're suggesting, but they do need to support others. And that's the thing. When we can support others in what they're doing, they're going to support you. That's part of the reciprocal nature of interaction. Take the time. If somebody is doing something great, go thank them. Remind them that what they're doing is, is a value the value to you and to the other people in the community. Occupy Joomla is about building up each other. Another thing we can do is to remove frustrations. I started Square One CMS. I'm not going to talk about it specifically, but the, the reason I started it in the way that I did is that it's a distribution. And so I have a separate code base that I maintain. I wanted to accomplish some things that, trust me, would have not happened had I tried to work and push them through in the middle of 2.5 development. It wasn't the place for it, okay? That's fine. And what I wanted actually to do was more or less experiment, and it, it doesn't make sense to experiment with a stable base. Lots of good reasons why it does not make sense for me to try and do that. But I removed my frustrations of working through that process by just separating it out, giving myself a little bit more control over it, and that was my frustration. And I didn't want to talk and try and convince people to death, hey, this is a good idea and here's why, blah, blah, blah. I feel like I would have spent as much time convincing people as I would have actually doing it. And in the end, that's probably true. Well, I, it still took me a while. But removing the frustrations means that you find ways to get around them, whether it's individually or as a project. If it's something you want to do, Find ways to get around those frustrations. We're really capable of that as a community. And sometimes it's simply a matter of ignoring them. Sometimes people say things that get in the way or they just want to keep talking about it and it's not productive. And they can't, maybe they can't see that. Or maybe that they're so passionate about it too, but your views don't match. And that's, that's part of open source. That's, that's part of what I love about open source, in fact, is that you know what? We can coexist in some way. But you have to find a way around it. We can improve ourselves, just like Joe was talking about, going out, learning some new stuff. It, the only way that we can improve Joomla is by improving ourselves. So go out, learn something new. Use another system. Build sites in other systems. I, it's okay. I'm not going to tell anyone, but it is okay. It, there's nothing wrong with using WordPress, uh, Drupal, Mod X, any of the other PHP or non-PHP, forbid that, um, learn some new stuff. Use it and, and just following up with Joe, take those things that you learn and see that it, they're doing really well and bring them back. We can find ways to take them back. And it's not just the code. What are they doing in their communities? How are they handling translations? Do they do a, a better job? Do they have some problems that, that we've solved? Can we help them? Wouldn't that be awesome? We spend some time not just improving ourselves, but helping to improve others through the process. So find ways to continually challenge yourself. Scratch your own itch. When you see something, if you really care enough about seeing it done, 
you know the saying is you've got to do it yourself if you really want something to get done right? Well, some degree, that's maybe what you've got to do. You've got to take the ownership to the level of actually starting the process, implementing it. I can't walk up to someone and say, um, hi, I think you need to do this uh, as part of the Joomla community. I think this is so important and I know you have the right skills to do it. They're going to look at you and say, who are you to tell me what to do first off? And then after that, they're going to say, but I have 10, 20 ideas of my own, which I think are equally or even better than your own. So don't always just talk and talk and talk. Go out and find ways to do it, even if you're not sure how to do it. A lot of times, that's the fun part. If, if you're part of Joomla, chances are you like to tinker. You like to learn stuff anyways, so go out and do it. Set some time aside. Break away, maybe, from something you already do on a day-to-day -day basis and try something different. I'm trying to learn uh, Ruby, slowly, but it's, you know, it's a different language. It's a different experience, and uh, those things shape my understanding of, of Joomla and of programming overall. Build relationships with the people around you in your user groups. Start a user group. I'm trying. Um, work with people in your company. They don't have to be at official Joomla events. Work with your clients.